walk out with Paul and Jay with Red Hot Stories from Post Game. Interviews announced within the hour. Join the at the Growler. All right, welcome into the latest edition of the Walkout presented by Cincy Shirts. Paul Daner Jr., Jay Morrison here with you as we break down a night that um, went poorly for the home team. Historically poorly. Historically poorly. And one of those that ends up 38-33 commanders over the Bengals. And, um, you know, it was supposed to be a night where the Bengals get back on track, where they pile on their 6-0 and record in prime time under Zach Taylor and, and put 0-2 behind them and start their path forward. Instead, it feels like we saw them go directly towards earth without a parachute right now mm. as they are now 0-3. And, and Jay... What is the percentage of teams that have made the playoffs since 1990 when starting 0 and 3? 2.4%. That's four teams that have done it in the last what 33 years, 34 years. And of those four that did it, only one advanced in the postseason. So you are talking crashing to earth. That is a long hill to climb back up. There is a lot to unpack in terms of where they went wrong tonight, uh, which was maybe one of the more shocking parts of what happened tonight and how the hell they pull out of it. And some of the things that went on in the locker room and in post game um, in terms of Joe Burrow, having a conversation immediately afterwards with Zach Taylor, them trying to figure out where they go next. Uh, Cam Taylor Britt's words from this week being blown up. Uh, and really used against him. And then when you don't back up your words, you got to eat them. And uh, that was a big part of what happened here too. Mm -hmm. All of that um, is going on. I do want to bring up, I just want to remind everybody, we are presented by Cincy Shirts, and uh, you can get 10% off any merchandise at Cincy Shirts. Growler Pod is our, uh, is our code word there. Put that in the promo, and you can get all that, anything you buy. Anything you want to buy. Maybe you want to buy some – there's going to be some sell the team Mike shirts that are going to show up and said, maybe you can get them next to your sell your team Bob shirts. You can just say, hey, could all owners sell? Maybe that's what you're going to go with after this one because people are in a bad place. I opened up Twitter for a moment. It was blame the media oh, time. Do I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's well, our – I mean, I, I take full responsibility. I mean, look, a lot of people lost tonight. People that wrote about Cam Taylor Britt today took mm-hmm. L's today too. So, look, you can't, you can't win them all though. <laughs> Um, also before we let's get in this game in one second, but before we do, I want to personally thank everybody that came out to our live show at Bed MGM and nation kitchen. It was just awesome. It was awesome to see so many people there. So many people came from other countries. I counted four countries. That's amazing. Four, <laughs> four countries. I would seem like everybody was from out of state. So many people that have been longtime listeners that came up to say hi. We're having a good time. We gave away so much stuff. It was just a blast down there. And you guys that listen and follow, and Lord knows we've pulled you through some dark times, and we're going to try to pull you through tonight have are just the best you're just the best and thanks to everybody that came out uh to bed mgm and nation kitchen it's such a great place and we had such a great time tonight yeah uh, sorry to say that we that the show was probably the highlight of your night after coming over and watching this um it was weird because you thought we i mean we didn't do a live show before the new england game but you kind of had that weird week one anything can happen vibe. this felt different this felt like This, as you said, this was the turning point. They were Mm -hmm. destined to win this game. No way they lose in primetime. Zach Taylor undefeated at home here in primetime. And just it, they could not do anything defensively. The offense played great. And the defense just couldn't get anything done. So all of you guys that came out to talk to us before and, and watch the live show, it was. It was great. The crowd was great. Uh, a lot of prizes were given away. Uh, we're doing it again. For the Philadelphia game, so mm-hmm. please, everybody, come back out and see us for that one as well. Um, let's talk about this defense and some of the historically bad numbers that you see. Not just, I mean, really everything. If you thought it looked bad, trust me, the numbers were somehow worse 
Uh, Jay, do you have any, you always have stats? Do you have any stats that you particularly uh, are excited to break out here? Well, I, I, I talked about the 2.4% chance of making the playoffs after an 0-3 start. I looked up teams since the 1970 merger that scored 33 points, gained 436 yards, and didn't turn the ball over. It's happened 365 times. 354 of them were wins. It was a 3% chance to lose that game, and they still found a way to lose that game. Um, this stat might be, and I know from talking to the press box, what you're writing about, this might be the most damning, surprising of all. When the, when the commanders got the ball back with 303 left in the third quarter for their fifth drive, at that point, they had more touchdowns than third downs faced. Yes. They had only had three third downs. They were all third and ones and four touchdowns. That's just, it's unbelievable against a rookie quarterback against as Cam Taylor said, Cam Taylor Britt said, a college offense. You know, he did eat those words, but just it's that's not supposed to happen. And yes, they did it last week. They scored every possession. They were all field goals. That was the Giants. This was the Bengals. This was supposed to be different, and it was just it was easy for Washington all night long. The six point three points per drive, which is like an impossible number, um, six point three points per drive, excluding kneel downs. Um, cause it was five touchdowns and a field goal, yeah. uh, that they end up, they end up having is a uh, Bengals record allowed. The previous most was 5.6. And that came in 2018 in a 51, 14 loss to new Orleans that got Terrell Austin fired the next day. Yeah, it was that it was curtains. It was, this can't happen. I mean, almost a, a half a point more per drive than the worst debacle that we've yeah. ever seen before. That's how inefficient they were. And the other part about it was you mentioned it, the third downs and third and manageable in these mm -hmm. situations, they were in third and one in all their third downs in the first three quarters. Yeah. There was no third and two or longer. Again, the previous low for that zero. Count a fourth down. They did get it to a fourth down and made it fourth and two. Yeah, actually got it a tackle fourth for a loss two. on third and one. Yeah, guess what happened? A 30-yard <laughs> completion on fourth and two. So they had, so let's count that as one. A single time in the first three quarters, they got a third or a fourth down to be more than a yard, and it was two yards. Yeah. That is also blowing away a record that's never happened before. The previous low was four. Again, the New Orleans debacle. I mean, you're talking about truly historical ineptitude from a defensive point of view. So there's other stats that I can run down here where, you know, the commanders, I believe, there's only been 33 times that a team has had no turnovers and no punts in a game in the Super Bowl era. Well, guess what? Commanders have two of them in back-to-back -back weeks. Unreal. They're, they're on some kind of a roll, but this was, look, credit to one, credit to the other. Uh, this is as much about the Bengals as it was about Jaden Daniels, who had his moments, and that, and that offense certainly had their moments and did well, but it was so bad. What, for you, Jay, was the biggest problem with this defense tonight? Zero pressure, and you have to do that. You have to make a rookie quarterback uncomfortable, and yeah, he was doing one read and then taking off and running, uh, and, he, and he wasn't gashing him on the ground, but he was he was getting three. He was getting four, and it would take first and ten to second and five, or second and five to third and one. He, I mean, they he made it easy on that offense, but it was just there were it wasn't all that was like that. There were times he sat in the pocket, and you're just like, where is everybody? There, there was no pressure whatsoever. That's how you go twenty one of twenty three. That was the second highest completion percentage against the Bengals in franchise history. Fran Tarkington once went 17 of 18 for 94.4%. Jaden Daniels was 91 and 91.8, I think it was tonight. And they weren't all dinks and dunks like we saw a lot of the times no. in the Washington game where it was just these quick screens. He was throwing the ball down the field. One of his two incompletions was one of the worst incompletions I've ever seen. He, he just missed the, the receiver so bad on a deep ball. Yeah. And his second, his second incompletion in the second half, a deep, a deep ball that he missed. That led. That was a third and five play, a rare third and five play, and they settled for the field goal. That was the only drive where they didn't kick a, where they didn't get a touchdown. 
So that was the problem. There was just no pressure. And you knew that might be an issue with B.J. Hill out and Sheldon Rankins out. But you get Chris Jenkins back. I think they were looking for some more from him. Sam Hubbard really wasn't a factor. Joseph Osai wasn't a factor. Joseph Osai really struggled. Joseph Osai was a factor yes. in getting juked and deked by Jaden Daniels yes. twice, one for a touchdown. Yeah, it was like sleight of hand trick. He, I mean, he was he had no idea where the ball was on a couple plays, including the one you're talking about, that the four-yard touchdown run. So there it was. It was a big issue. Even Trey Hendrickson, he had one sack. Uh, he had a couple pressures. But it wasn't the Trey Hendrickson that you're used to seeing. It was just Jaden Daniels running around in the backfield or running around in the, I don't know what you would call it, because he didn't get to the secondary, but running past the line of scrimmage, making plays with his feet when he wasn't doing it with his arms. You've got to hit rookie quarterbacks like that and make them unsure. The Bengals just couldn't do it. Uh, on, I mean, it was. He would stand back there and recite his Heisman speech and, <laughs> and talk about every touchdown he threw at LSU and his relationship with Joe, but do a press conference back there. Yeah. There's just no pressure. Uh, he had, on throws, Dropbacks where he had at least 3.2 seconds or more, six of seven for 117 yards, yeah. you know, where they're just absolutely no one nearby. Now, part of that is, again, that third manageable stuff where they didn't feel like they could get themselves in position to blitz. You thought maybe they'd force the issue or more. A lot of those blitzes were run blitzes because they were so concerned about getting run over and they really didn't. They got passed over and you finally get it as, you know, Joe Burrow and the offense were doing their thing, and we can yeah. we can we can touch on them here in a minute. But you finally get them into you know they have a couple of false starts to put them behind the chains. You finally get a sack from Trey Hendrickson to get it in a second and twenty one, mm-hmm. and they convert. They make their way down. They had yep. a first and fifteen. They convert even when you got them behind the chains. They're able to just find a way to make a play, and then you get the last one, the last third down, and. You bring the blitz. Geno Stone blows up Jaden Daniels, and he throws the high arcing, absolute dime in the bucket to, Ma- to Terry McLaurin. I, I'll take that, right? Like if you're the yeah. if you're if you're talking about a night, that's a hat tip moment. Okay, the rest of them are throw your hat moments because <laughs> it was stuff that you just you have to be better. I'm with you. I the the defensive line, the and Lou Anarumo, I think are together in this. Where look, you know your lines not got stuff going you know you're gonna have issues there and as it goes how can you you got to find more ways to force the issue you got to find more ways to make something happen and the combination of the defensive line and them not finding more ways to make washington and Jaden daniels uncomfortable ends up costing them and ends up being why it was just absolutely so awful the thing is jay the defense had been okay the first couple of weeks and certainly last week in kansas city you felt like took a step yeah they got run over by new england but they didn't allow any explosives in that game they seemed to they seem to have fixed that point and and now you have you know you had four plays of 24 more yards for for washington and they were just throwing that's to me the discouraging thing about this yeah and that as much as zero and three almost and 2.4 percent is just how far the wrong direction the defense went here and makes you concerned and say, where's the fixes? Where's the – Miles Murphy? Like Murphy, Rankins, and Hill, like all coming back from their injuries? Is that the answer? Maybe it's a little bit, but it's it's not the answer that they need. And, and I don't know where the big changes and the things you need to see are going to come from. I mean, it, the, the, the pressure was the glaring thing, but it was all the other issues that they – that you dealt with last year, the, the missed tackles on the edge. A lot of those. It wasn't 14 like it was a New England game. Guys running free in the secondary or just running by guys. Uh, Terry McLaurin blowing past Cam Taylor Britt for 55-yard gain. There was just so much going on that it was a little of this, little of that, little of this, and it just all added up to, to really, I mean, what I wrote about it, this was worse than anything we saw in 2023. It was. Yeah. And 2023 was bad. And that is, that's discouraging when you think you're moving in the right direction and, and then this comes up. And then I, I don't want to denigrate Jaden Daniels. He's a hell of a talent, but my God, it, it is a rookie quarterback making his third career start. And I, I don't, I didn't understand why, like you said, why not Mike Hilton is a, a great slot blitzer and, and he's, that's kind of what he's made his name in, in this league. And if, if they're throwing a lot of those quick screens, why not bring him a few more times on blitzes? Even if you don't get home to Jane Daniels, you can get up and disrupt kind of the Tennessee play from the, mm-hmm. the playoff game when he tipped it and intercepted it. 
there, there was other ways to affect them, and they just they just felt like they were on their heels all night long against the guy they should have been attacking. All right, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Look, like, it's just there's you can go on about how bad it was all night long. I, we both have stories up. Go ahead and read them if you want to do sad stats. Um, Joe Burrow and the offense. For the most part, I would say we'll, we'll asterisk that and get back to red zone in a moment. You know, I thought lived up to the billing of, okay, T's back. They've got all these pieces in place um, and they can get going. You know, Joe was outstanding for the most part, especially as they needed to make him. They had that drive where he comes, he's four for four for 65 yards, zip, yeah. zip, zip. Jamar with two explosive go balls down the sideline. They were really able to use their 12 personnel stuff to help them uh, get max protect on the first deep ball to Jamar chase. Yep. Um, Yosevash had a, had another touchdown and five receptions. They were able to get him involved. The running game was really effective. I mean, they were getting yeah. chunks. It was like, has a team ever lost a game with this many chunk plays? I mean, they were just getting chunk after chunk after chunk against Washington the problem being they would get to the red zone Can't and have chunks and it. they would chunk it up. Yeah. You know, they would have, you know, Joe had some bad throws or some yeah. miscommunication of some sort, you know, whether it was a slant to Andre Yosevash that went to basically nobody or a ball where he just misses Zach Moss standing right in front of him. Yeah, uh, and another ball he kind of throws on the ground right at Jamar Chase, forcing the skip. And then guess what? You miss a field goal. And here you go, and now you that's the margin for error. You lose 38 to 33. Your defense couldn't stop a soul, and you lose by five points, and you messed it up in the red zone. I mean, it was a game you were going to have to win. Uh, obviously, they were going to need 40 to get there. The red zone stuff ends up keeping them from being good enough. I, I, I hesitate to get deep into criticism because I they largely were very good tonight. Um, but – you know, those red zone plays put them behind and forced them to have to play from behind, and that really allowed Washington to dictate the game. Yeah, the puzzling thing to me was they did run the ball so well, as well as we've seen in quite some time, except in the red zone. And a lot of those red zone possessions, they would get down, not necessarily red zone, but goal to go, and they would run it on first down and get nothing. And then you're it, – it's second and eight, or second goal, but from the eight or – and then, you know, Burrow has a throw that goes awry. And now all of a sudden you're in that pressure situation on third down. And it just – they they felt totally in sync and clicking outside the 20. And then when they got down in those goal-to-go situations, it was just a totally different offense. And I realize the, the field shrinks and you don't have everything available to you. But they, they, they found a way to be pretty good in the red zone in the past, especially with Joe Burrow being able to move. And that, that the one that he missed Zach Moss on, he rolled out and it, it looked like it was going to be a decent gain. And they just weren't on the same page. Uh, I don't know if, if they need to go away from the first down runs when they get down there, but you, you just have to make something happen down there. And especially they all talked about it. We knew right away early on what kind of game this was going to be. So they're feeling the pressure. They know when they get down there, they got to have touchdowns, not field goals. And that was the only real criticism of this offense was they just couldn't make things work when they got down in the tight area. The Bengals are now 0-3. And you mentioned the percentage. We, we know what that is now. After the game, Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor kind of go in the side door instead of into the locker room. And, and Joe says after the game, yeah, he went in. It was sort of a mutual decision from him and Zach to talk for a second and called it a positive conversation about it. You assume something about sort of what the message and direction of the team needs to be. Um, that's different, right? Yeah. This is different. I mean, they have had slides before. They've lost two games. They've put themselves into holes before. This is further, man. This three is, is three is different, and zero and three is different. It always is the case. And Pittsburgh's three and zero. You're three games back in the <laughs> AFC North of the Steelers. And there's yeah, there's fourteen games or whatever. But you, you can sense the feeling in the locker room after the game that this absolutely is different and, and, and joe was talking about look i i have to figure out what kind of leadership this yeah, team needs and if they need something different from me because they feel a little rudderless mm -hmm. you know where dumb silly mistakes 
you know, just it just seems like everything is not fitting together. They don't play complementary football. There seems to be a lack of cohesion and consistency, right? Um, you know, whether it's special teams allowing a long kick return to come out of second half and missing a field goal or defense playing poorly today and playing better last week and offense playing poor in week one and then making some critical errors last week. Like all of – it's just there seems to be a lack of cohesion. And I, I – Look, this is Burrow's team. Yeah. So it, he needs to be – if it's time for him to speak up, if it's time for him to say something, if it's time – there's something that needs to be done that can jolt this team. Maybe it just took tonight and this stage mm-hmm. to jolt this team. It may be too late to jolt. Like, it may be the death panels, right? You may be, like, pounding them and – they're just like, I don't know. I think he's gone, right? Like, I don't know. You can jolt all you want to. Uh, they need to go beat Carolina. Oh, if Andy Dalton sticks the knife in him, you know, benched on his birthday, <laughs> comes back to, to, to finish off this season after f- four games. I mean, it's just, it was not supposed to go this way. That was kind of the feel I got in a lot of the conversations in the locker room of a lot of kind of disbelief of it wasn't supposed to go this way. Yeah. And all we can do is just go focus on Carolina. That's all they can do right now is try to, instead of being 0 and 4, focus on being 1 and 3 and just try to go as, as absolutely granular as you can. Because if you start thinking about the big picture of 2.4%, you end up taking yourself to a dark place of disbelief that this season is somehow over before it started. Yeah, I mean, how many guys talked about that tonight saying that they this is not where they ever thought they would be, but but we're in it. We've got to get out of it. Ted Karras said that. Logan Wilson said it. Here we are. We're in it. we got to figure this out. Um, I, I I think that's a scary game next week. I don't know we're going to do a podcast later and really break down Carolina, Cincinnati, but, man, the way Andy Dalton played, just rejuvenating that franchise after two brutal games to start and the benching of Bryce Young, that – that game, I mean, we thought this game was was a gimme on the schedule when it came out. The Carolina game definitely looked like one, and I don't know. There, there's going to be – I don't know if this, I don't know if they're going to be on edge. There's going to be some tight, tight sphincters this week. <laughs> it's tight sphincter <laughs> week. I mean, Calling for a tight sphincter week. Talk about – I mean, get out the must-win armband, whatever oh, yeah. analogy you want to use. It's got to happen. I don't know. I'll have to look up 0-4. I don't think it's ever happened. It yeah. was interesting. We talked to Ted Karras. I asked him if he'd ever been 0 3 at any point in his career. And he said, Yeah, senior year, we started 0 3 in one state. Yeah. High school, obviously, quite a bit different than the NFL. But at least you have some point of reference where 0 and 2, they've done it many times and they've known how to dig out of that. 0 and 3 is different than 0 and 2. It's not just one game. It is a, there was a much different feel in the locker room. And, and I think they know how hard this climb is going to be coming out of this. And, you got to get it right right away. You you they have to go down to Carolina, and and play better. Get a win, show that they are who they thought they are. That they that they are who everybody else thought they are. Were whatever the present tense is there. <laughs> it's late. It doesn't matter. It's early. It is oh. it is two twenty right now. <laughs> just so you know, as we record, we missed this. last call. Yeah, we did. Um, you know what? They're going to Carolina, not Cole Rain, though, Jay. Exactly. Okay. High school and winning state is a little bit different when everybody gets in the playoffs and just be good when you get there. You you gotta you gotta go through absolute hell now just to try to see the tournament. Now you have mm. an expanded tournament, you got the extra team and all that stuff, but and you got Joe Burrow, so you got a chance, but you didn't think you had a defense that could ever allow something like that. And that is really where the biggest concern comes. Um, maybe Cincy shirts will put some uh, of their bad stats. So I don't care about the sad stats. Maybe if a shirt says that or whatever, I, I I'm hoping at some point there will be something that's worth putting on a shirt this year. After your stats, after your stats, there's still lots of good Bengals merch. Make sure you go to cincyshirts.com. Uh, you can you can hit the uh, the QR code right there on YouTube if you're there. But you use the promo code GrowlerPod and uh, you can buy anything you want. You you can buy again. Get some sell the team bobs if you need to, or yeah. or whatever it is you want to get. Whatever. There's there's still plenty of awesome Bengals stuff they have up on their site or Cincinnati football shirts yes. up on their site that you can go get. Excuse me. 
um, and all kinds of fun stuff. Look, I, I was really excited. I pulled my Norwood lateral shirt back out again because the mm -hmm. lateral was back open, yeah. baby. I wore it in its honor. Shout out to the lateral being back. Pulled my Cincy shirt out for that one. So go go all on. Right. There's plenty of great stuff on there. You can get the hoodies are good. It's about to be hoodie season. Get some of those with all the stripes on them. So make sure you do that. Oh, by the way, our next uh, live event down at Nation of Bed MGM is going to be before the Eagles game uh, on the 27th of October. So a little bit of a break until we are back there at Bet MGM, but of course still get down there, support nation and Bet MGM. They, they just have such a great atmosphere and have been so good to us. And you growl pals, we learn, man, you come out, you come out. So thank Reserve you. your table now. Reserve your table now. Go to nationkitchenandbar.com. Any game, any big event. You're like, man, I just want to make sure I can get into a sports bar and have a table and have delicious drinks and good food. All you got to do, go to nationkitchenandbar.com. And you can reserve a table and, and make sure you're all set up for whatever the next big game is that you care about. Um, probably Sunday. Pretty big one. All of a sudden, at Carolina and Andy Dalton feels massive and that this team is playing with their season on the line in week four. We talked about, what did you say? Wake me up when September ends when, we, right. did the, when we did the live show. Uh, with on the Green Day concert yeah. was was your song because oh yeah just tell me what it is when September ends where they're yeah, at we know they'll be three and one at the least right now they have they're zero oh and three they have lost twice to teams with a new head coach who drafted in the top five and took a quarterback at home wow the Bengals are on the brink but we're not going anywhere. We're here to go through all season long, whether it's good or bad or otherwise. And uh, we will be asking the questions that you guys want asked. If you have something that you want to make sure that is addressed by either me or Jay or to Zach Taylor or Joe Burrow or whoever, send those to the Growler podcast at gmail.com. Plus, we'll get your Growler bet reviewed, see if any of you were any winners here tonight. Uh, but send all those to us and we will get to those on the pod this week. Bald Don't Lie, PD and J, Who Day Light, all back with you before we head to Carolina. All right. Thanks to everybody for listening and watching on YouTube. Chin up, Bengals fans. The sun will come out. Will it? Tomorrow. We don't know that. It, it won't rain, I don't think, because it never does, except for today, earlier. But I shouldn't have sang. I knew I shouldn't have sang. It was a bad, never go out with a song at two in the morning. It's like, it's just, it's just bad juju. Oh, well, I did it. I'm not going to, you know what? You know what? I'm going to be my Cam Taylor Britt impression. And I don't regret it. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody.